Hey everybody, it's me, John, M. I am working on some Rumble Slam. Oh, oh yeah, Rumble Slam. <laughs> Rumble Slam is one of the newer games that we have from Privateer, or not Private Tabletop Combat, excuse me. I'm in a GigaCon state of mind. Um, so it's from Tabletop Combat. It's a pretty awesome game that involves fantasy fantasy wrestling so uh if you guys are a fan of wrestling or a fan of rest uh fantasy games uh it'll be a good pickup um i've been working on this triceratops named trihorn for a little bit now so he's approaching that finished state um i decided to do a white-ish underbelly on him so what i'm doing now is i'm hitting and blocking in the underbelly and as soon as I get a nice even coat which will probably take a little bit on account of going from like a darker blue to a more whitish color uh, I'm gonna hit it with a nice uh, kind of glaze slash wash just to pop out those highlights and such and then I'll come back in and do some more highlights and shadowing uh, so I'm currently using uh, Underbelly Blue from P3, and it is kind of an off-white. It's maybe a little bit darker than like a true off-white, but I personally like it a lot. Um, just because like when you use off-whites, you probably don't need to go nearly as light as you think you probably would need to. So, uh, blocking these base colors in will probably take, you know, more than two thin coats. Probably, you know, three or four. It's going to involve some brush control, uh, especially since, like, the tail on this guy is not necessarily super well like detailed so it's going to involve me like forcing some details through so if you guys are joining me today feel free to chat say hi I'm I'm watching the chat so uh, I'm here to respond to questions or talk about what interests you in this game or maybe if there's another game that's interesting to you we just had a giant announcement about um, Kill Team, so I'm expecting a lot of hype for that. And I'll eventually work on my Kill Team as uh, rules get announced. I need to break my Thousand Suns out for that. Uh, but I'm really excited about Rumble Slam. Because uh, once again, it is a game that lets me play Dinosaurs. So, I am going with dinosaurs. Sorry if I'm blowing into the mic. I don't know if that picks up or not. So, I'm probably going to be working on this stuff for a bit. Uh, going back and forth. And this is like one of those things that um, doing like block in base coloring, uh, especially while using um, lighter colors over like darker bases, you definitely want to like take a break and like sit back and let it dry and kind of set before you go and do the next thing. So I'm going to start working on my next Rumble Slam wrestler, which is the Dilomite Kid. The what? Dilomite Kid. So he's based off of a Dilophosaurus. Um, and so anyone who knows um, the original Jurassic Park, yeah, that scene. he's the guy with the frills and the uh, the acidic spit. The one that killed the uh, things. Yeah. So I'm doing a mix of Thornwood Green and Beast Hide for his initial skin tone and um, it's probably like a two to one on Thornwood because um, this is the base coat I want it to be a little darker uh, I want him to be relatively muted on the bodies so I can really kind of push forward uh, the frills that he has 
And as I'm blocking this guy in, I can talk to you a little bit about what we know about Dilophosaurus. Uh, we don't think that he had frills or spit acid. No, no, Jurassic Park was wrong then. Um, I mean, so Jurassic Park did the best thing that they could have. And when they said that they cloned all these guys, that they had to fill in gaps, right? Yeah. So, regardless of what Dilophosaurus ends up becoming, you know, what Jurassic Park had wasn't a true representation of that dinosaur. No, well, Jurassic World did have a line in the movie where one of the uh, guy, scientists said, look, we, we gave what the people wanted, not what is yeah. accurate. So. Yeah, so uh, Dilophosaurus was also a lot bigger than it was portrayed in Jurassic uh, Park. Um, it's not, like, nearly as big as a T-Rex, but it was probably more... Um, Allosaurian in scale, so like a little bit bigger, and he had a crazy kind of overbite. So he um, was very interesting. Um, I find him really interesting. I also like, uh, I mean, like regardless of what Dilophosaurus really was, this guy takes after the Jurassic Park version, and so it's a bit of fun that you can do with him. Uh, I'm definitely going to push that frill forward and I'm gonna do what I can to make him a nice kind of muted gray body. So how did you react when you found out that, no, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, you're, you're How did you react when you found out that they were coming out with dinosaur figures for this uh, game? I was pretty excited. Um, I saw it, I saw this when I went to Kickstarter, um, but I'm always weary to invest in Kickstarter games, uh, just simply because a lot of times production time and things like that will go past my hype level. Yeah. So like, if it takes the Kickstarter like a year or two to come out, by the time it actually comes out, I'm already on to the next thing. Um, so I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I'm glad that they have dinosaurs in it. Um, I will play when it comes out, maybe, if I have the time. And by the time we got it, uh, a bunch of friends got into it here at the store. So I, uh, I too, hopped in. The fact that they have a dinosaur faction makes it really nice and appealing to play and the, the faction itself is not just all dinosaurs it's just it has some dinosaurs in it so do we now have a yeah oh and Ross uh, I believe uh, the Space Wolf book should be out sometime after Kill Team. Uh, it, it's looking like that's what the schedule is. Uh, and I don't have any confirmation from Games Workshop. I'm just kind of going off of what uh, looks likely. So, yeah. So now we have a new Giga Rambo, or not Giga Rambo, so, um, Rumble, Rumble Slam Day here at Giga mm -hmm. On Mondays. So when that's when, when did that get when did that start again, especially? Uh, it started officially last Monday, so it hasn't been around for long. And so if you're looking to get into the game, there's still plenty of time to get into it. Um, you know, everyone's still starting out. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, other than the fact that uh, I get to play with my dinosaurs. Yeah. There's going to be people demoing the game? Yeah, uh, there'll be people up here every Monday to demo and kind of show off the game and the system and all that. So if it's something that interests you and you'd like to get into some fantasy wrestling, uh, Monday's the day. Maybe you get like yeah. some small little fireworks or something, I don't know. Like a okay. sm okay. sm smog machine. Yeah, a small smog machine would be great. Oh, yeah. Actually, you built a, uh, what is it? a Giga... I, I did build a wrestling table for GigaCon, and that is for Extreme Colossal Wrestling, which uh, is kind of awesome. Uh, that is Privateer Press's version of uh, a wrestling game, and it is about taking your biggest and baddest uh, monsters or uh, machines and throwing them into a ring together. Pacific Rim. 
Yep, it is literally Pacific Rim. Yeah, Mark's pretty uh, pretty knowledgeable with this game. I uh, I am not super knowledgeable, but I really like the figures. So uh, feel free to ask me questions, and uh, just don't be surprised if I have to refer you to uh, Mark or Drew or uh, Rob Ashwell, people who are much more knowledgeable than me. So yeah, if you like uh, wrestling at all or are a fan of professional wrestling, there is literally a, a wrestler out here for you. They have taken some of the, the most iconic wrestlers in our world and made a fantasy equivalent to them. Uh, my personal favorite is the dwarf Ronnie Salvage. Because uh, I've always been a fan of Macho Man. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So I got the base coat on Dilemite Kid. Uh, I will try to hold him up to the camera. I don't know exactly where I need to be, but yeah, so it's a nice kind of like green brown. Um, so once again, trying to keep him muted so his uh, his frills can really take over. And I'll be doing his like little onesie uh, pretty muted as well. So I'm going to go back to Trihorn and start um, doing a little more glazing on his chest. And I'll probably be mixing up a uh, a wash soon to uh, get that nice color going. So yeah. Uh, so how does this thing actually work? What do you mean? You build a team of wrestlers. Yeah. And any team of wrestlers, you don't always have to use the same faction. You can just pull the ones you like. Mm -hmm. So you make that team, teams and then you fight in a ring. And well, yeah, but uh, well, so I'm talking about like the. Uh, is it a good? It looks like it looks like it's a grid based system. Yes, it is a grid based system. So um, when you're fighting in the ring, uh, the objective is to remove someone for the ring, okay, yeah. and the ring's represented by a grid. And that's how you move and move other models is by, uh, you know, taking a certain amount of squares and doing that. All right, nice. Now, what, uh, yeah. what, two, did, what two factions come in the box right now? Um, it's probably going to be, I think it's dwarves and orcs. So dwarves the and orcs. So the classic rivalry. Um, hey, Mark. Yeah. Can you do me a favor and get Umbral Umber from the shelf? Sure. Now, this is not from Games Workshop, is it? No, it's from Tabletop Combat. Okay. I still go to the old location, John. Uh, and so while I'm waiting for Spain paint to dry, I will show off one of the models uh, that Privateer Press sent us early. Uh, it is Prospero. He's one of the new models from Crucible Guard. We have uh, a preview copy painted up early. So if you guys haven't seen the new Alchemical Faction from War Machine and Hordes, uh, we at least have one piece up for display, currently that painted, ready amazing. to go. Yeah. That looks nice. Where to... Aha. Umbro Umber is one of those paints that I recommend everyone having at all times. It is a great brown. Yeah. Zangie's um, boots are part Umbro Umber. So, uh, I'm going to be doing some striping on the back of this Stegosaur. And by Stegosaur, I mean um, Triceratops. I'm going to be doing a base of Umbral Umber. I like it. In Mother Russia. So as doing something like striping and such, you want to make sure that your paints are thin. 
um, like anything where you're building up, um, like patterns or whatever. You don't want to like put on like something super heavy, uh, just because it generally doesn't look natural at that point. So small thin layers where you get to build up, I find to be the best especially when it comes to stripes and patterns and things like that and I'll be putting some highlights and things like that matching the contour but I want to do a nice blocked stripes and I'm going to be kind of doing some like chevron-y patterns so just like little V's back and forth um, on his back and it's really nice with this kind of model because his skin is so muscly that like doing something like a striping pattern kind of gives you a lot of opportunity to like flex some painting muscles so Sure. Now, do you have a chance? Did you have any chance to uh, paint anything from Soul, uh, Soul Wars? I did. Um, that was last stream. I worked yeah. on one of the uh, the ghosts. So yeah, and also like when doing striping, you want to pick a color that's going to contrast with the the skin tone so it shows up and I know it's probably difficult to see the umbral umber now um, but we're going to be bringing it up with a little bit of yellows and reds so we can better establish more stripes more Now, I enjoy the fact that one of these figures is a like Greek uh, Spartan, pretty much from a 300. Yes, uh, he is called the Greek. And I think that's amazing. There you go. And Mark's been working on him. Well, here's, the, uh, here's his power card right there. Uh, yeah, Justin, uh, anyone's able to come in any day of the week to use the paint tables. Uh, as long as there's space available, you can use it. We don't require any payment. Um, or reservation for it is just first come first serve um, which I think is really cool and I'm glad we're able to offer a service like that hey, we even got some nice and new uh, countertops yeah well, tamper top covers so Joe uh, who has joined me has taken it as one of his personal responsibility to make sure that these tables are clean and fit for anyone coming to play or paint. So uh, you should always find these tables in the best conditions. Oh yeah. And that's thanks to Joe. So if you ever have a time and you see Joe wander around the store, say thank you. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. So yeah, I'm really enjoying uh, how the striping's coming together. No, no, oh, striping, oh wow, it's nice. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. I need to the sauce. I still find that funny. Now, it's, now that war machine figure looks really yeah. good. I like the color combinations. Those are my favorite cut. That's my favorite combination yeah. of colors right there. You like the you like the um, the color combo of the crucible guard, the uh, teals and the orange. I do the teal, the gold, the orange. Teal is one of my favorite colors, and so is yellow or well, gold is yellow. So those two put together, I do enjoy pretty much. So I'm a big fan of it. Actually, I wanted, that's how I, that's what I would want to paint my Space Marines. Add a little black yeah. to it. I need my and any dwarfs I get for any of these things like uh, if I do if I do buy what is it 
Blood Bowl Jewels, I would hit the, the uniforms out there. So that would be my other choice. Man, this base is heavy. Yeah, um, it's a full resin base. Um, I really wanted to kind of like do a nice little showcase base for him. Nice. So I decided to do a good old little resin base. Uh, now really how, make it fancy. How many of these do we have? In, do you have any of these? No. So he's a preview model. So okay. he doesn't even come out until later. Um, he is solely here to kind of show people off the faction uh, before it has its official release. Now, what's the history behind this faction? Uh, the Crucible Guard is the military arm of a uh, research and development company. So they are one of the uh, premier scientific minds in the world and they develop a lot of cool technology um, the issue is that it's fairly sought after so a lot of people want that super neat tech the issue uh, is uh, not everyone wants to pay some people want to take them over by force um, or conquer them and so they decided to get a military branch um, so, with that, um, with the military branch, uh, they're able to defend themselves and kind of move forward with the plans that they had. Now, I remember on our trip to Orge, uh, Ohio for Orge, we were listening to a... Audiobook. Uh, that was the uh, audiobook Dark Convergence. And on, and on one of the characters, you said, was trying to find an alternative ways of... Uh, powering says steam right yeah and so uh the crucible guard um while different than that main character are also finding alternative fuel sources or um different ways of alchemical mixes to improve everyday life and they probably wouldn't see eye to eye with the protagonist um his name's nemo um but they would probably have uh similar like modus operandi so yeah Fun. yeah so right now I'm, I'm blocking in the beaks and the horns with this uh, uh, umbral umber while I have it out uh, these things will be made significantly lighter um, when I get to them but I kind of wanted to get a base coat of brown on them uh, just so they're more uh, accepting of the bone color that's probably going to go on them. I mean, I might leave the tips of the horns and the tips of the beak darker, um, but I'll kind of wait and see how I feel as I'm going through it. So what other, what, what other, uh, what other figures come in the dinosaur pack? Um, so the dinosaur pack, you get um, two geckos, which are smaller diminutive lizard men then you get two of the larger lizard men and then you get one big crocodile dude the crocodile dude is pretty neat um, but you know not necessarily a dinosaur and also not necessarily super accurate to either crocodiles or dinosaurs now is that part of the dinosaur pack or is that part of the individual pack uh, trihorn is an individual same with dilemite kid okay so, both these guys. Hopefully, hopefully they'll have a T-Rex. Oh, uh, they might. Um, I actually like the fact that they did some herbivores first. Yeah. Just because, you know, you don't see that as much. I feel like... as menacing as a yeah. carnivore. But yeah. I appreciate this cool Triceratops dude. with this impressive display of horns. All right, so um, I've dried out the first batch of Umber Umber, so I'm going to now make a shade of Umber Umber to go back to the Dilemite Kid. Um, and this is gonna be Umber Umber plus a little bit of coal black to keep it uh, a little bit green and a little bit on the cool side. So give me a moment to locate my coal black. Boop. Yeah, 
Make sure there's enough water in there to make it actually a shade. So the thing is with these guys, you definitely want things to be uh, thin enough uh, just because of how muscly they can be. So I am also making sure when I paint on him, I'm pulling the shades in areas that will take well to it. So like under the arms, in between muscles, trying to find the lines on him so that shade can find a home. And unlike Games Workshop shades, when you make your own, you can make them as pronounced or delicate as you want. So even though I'm shading this guy, it's not really replacing uh, a lot of the, the work I did before. So I'm just targeting those cracks and crevices or where a natural shadow would fall and uh, kind of blending it out uh, where I see just to make it softer. And also another thing with like shades is I like to find where the, the like lines meet. So like where his leotard meets his uh, skin. So making that natural line of shade. So, yeah. And luckily, the Dilemite Kid is not nearly as uh, robust as Trihorn. He, uh, smaller model, so uh, less shade overall, and it also means uh, less drying time and less time for me kind of deliberating where to put stuff. So one of the issues that I have with Rumble Slam is whoever sculpted the dinosaurs and the lizards and all that sort of stuff uh, just did very basic tails and it becomes very difficult for me at least to shade and highlight them because they end up just operating like big tubes. They're just tubes of flesh and I'm not a super big fan of painting that sort of stuff. Now would you prefer to have scales or, or like scales? Scales or musculature and all that like tails are actually comprised of a lot of muscles and with how muscular these guys are like if you're going to be showing off super lean like torsos and things like that you probably should do the same for your tails. Um, so, like I said, I am just trying to target places that shadows will fall. Uh, the undertail is probably going to be a big one. And I'm going to put the shade down and then pull it back. So constantly back and forth. Uh, Joe, do you think I should put him in an animal print leotard? Animal print leotard? Yeah, should he, like, should he have like stripes or spots on his leotard? Hmm. Or should I just make the focus his frills? You, what you could do instead of spots, you could do like uh, scales. Oh, like a scale pattern on it? Scale pattern, or crocodile, or something, something metal. Oh no, feathers, you can have feathers on it. Feathers? Oh man, I don't know if I can, I mean, I might try. I don't know if I can paint feathers all that well. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the dancer has to have feathers, right? That's true, that's actually a very good point, Joe. I like where your head's at. <laughs> so I think it'd be kind of funny, it's like, well, at least the leotard has feathers on it. So. Uh, let's see what would be good. Um, oh, you can have the Jurassic Park logo on it. Oh man, I could do that. So the Jurassic World. That's that's, that's, that, that's another good one. It's a dinosaur. All right. Well, <laughs> I got a little bit of time to think about that. So. And after you, uh, maybe after you, if you win a match, every time you just play that theme. Yeah. <laughs> 
as the dancers go go marching off to the locker room. Oh, that you spare thing while they're coming on to the ring. So yeah, while you're applying shades, make sure to line the fingers. Give those fingers a little bit of definition. Find the crevices of the muscles. I have a tendency to shade heavy on the hands to begin with, because I find it easier to do like that heavy and then come back and like take care of something like the fingers um, later. And like I said, just line where that cloth meets the skin, create that natural shadow and barrier. Same with where the frill meets the shoulder, making that nice natural shadows. Uh, well, we got a vote for leopard print by Justin. Leopard print. I'm like so, like you know, they are from the jungle. Like I feel like leopard print's not like super far out. No. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna move over to uh, while well, that's drying. I'm gonna do a wash for the uh, Triceratops uh, chest. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that wash that we had before. I'm gonna mix it in with the uh, underbelly blue that we initially did for him. You could have one that has Dennis's face on it, smiling. It's true. Uh uh uh. <laughs> Do that one because it'd be yeah. ironic. So yeah, um, once again, going to get a little bit of this wash. Applied in the cracks and crevices and kind of blend it in. Think about doing some scars. Some scars on him? Yeah. Um, maybe. Uh, I would like to do scars more on guys that have smoother skin. Okay. Uh, because these guys have such textured bodies mm -hmm. um, with all the muscles, um, I feel like um, the scarring might get a little lost or make the model a little too busy. Um, but it's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. So once again, I'm applying this wash slash glaze slash whatever you really want to call it. Um, and I'm trying to stick to where light would naturally or shadow would naturally fall and kind of putting it in there and not overstating the shadows at the beginning because I'm going to mix a little bit of the... Um, the 50-50 Umber Umber shadow mix in here. Uh, I'm just you know, trying to block in a little bit of this, especially before I start throwing highlights and such. Now, what is uh, what's going to be happening in this GigaCon? Uh, so GigaCon is a War Machine and Hordes event. So it's all going to be Privateer Press games. Okay. Um, and it is predominantly a qualifier for a larger event called War Machine Weekend. So um, anyone who does well here has a chance of qualifying for this like super big War Machine and Hordes uh, tournament that takes place in November. So it's really popular with a lot of uh, high tier tournament players because of uh, that sort of uh, qualifier status. Now, do you know if Jesse's going to be uh, playing? Yeah, Jesse uh, Jesse Farmer will be playing. He uh, he's rocking out. Um, what should we call it? I believe Signar for the event. Okay. Now, so, how uh, how good of a player is he? A good player? Yeah. There's a lot of great players. Um, there's not only a lot of great players here at Gigabytes, but there's a lot of play great players coming in town for the event as well. That's good. So it's really kind of great to see the community all uh, coming out for this. Yeah. And when I say the community, I mean like 
the uh, southeast in general. There's a lot of guys from the southeast showing up for this event. Um, so I really appreciate everyone who's like traveling in for it. And uh, you know, spending the weekend with us. So I'm coming back in. I'm kind of cutting it, um, cutting into the shadows a little bit with this uh, underbelly blue uh, to get uh, proper transitions and all that. So I think I've been off camera a little bit, maybe a little too much. Uh, if you guys can't ever see me, uh, yell at me. I get a little too um, tunnel vision sometimes. So yeah, uh, we know that there's going to be a lot of shadow uh, coming in under the jaw and all that. So we definitely want to make sure we get this in shadow as well as there's going to be several shadows kind of cutting in from the clavicle, which we probably want to bump up shade wise. And then finally, the, the darkest part is going to be in between the pecs and definitely towards the bottom part of his torso because that's going to be more in shadow. So sometimes you got to be bold and make a decision and kind of stick with it. And once again, realize that no matter what you can do or no matter what mistakes you make, you can come back and fix them. And right now I'm just coming back in with the troll blood base to kind of soften some of the shadows. And making sure you know the paint stays thin and the transitions stay transitioning. And thank you, Sean, uh, for the compliments. Those of you guys who don't know, uh, Sean will be doing a paint class with us. Uh, first of its kind at Gigabyte, so I'm super proud to announce that we're doing a paid structured paint class. Um, so I really hope people who are interested in painting or want to get back into it take advantage of it because it's super neat. So once again, coming back in, highlighting where I should, maybe someplace where I let the shadows get a little too strong, especially on this neck. I'm trying to make things as natural as possible. So we're doing this, and I'm highlighting the top portion of each muscle. Try to get that that pop and I'll be coming back uh, the paint class is going to be the 16th of July and we have signups through the site uh, so if you have ever wanted to improve your painting ability um, or take a formal course come no further than Sean Pitty's Sean Twitty's now is he gonna start from the beginning or yes he'll be starting from the beginning so Joe this would be great for you Okay, yeah. Um, because you, uh, it, it'll be from the start. So, yeah. And also, it's also nice because it starts at 6.30 on a Monday, mm -hmm. which means that'll be after your shift. Oh, yeah. So you can kind of come in and uh, start learning how to paint. And I know you know how good of a painter Sean is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I got that base down. Uh, I'm going to go back to the tail. I'm going to start working on the tail. I'm going to apply a little bit of this shade and start pulling it down. And I'm going to then apply it where, you know, maybe there'll be a little bit more shadow down here. Less of the tail being shown in. Now, did you say it was the cost to get for the paint stream is ten dollars yeah it's ten dollars to, to enter for the paint class which is a phenomenal deal um, 
those who probably don't know Sean all that well. Uh, he's an accomplished painter. Uh, he's literally painted everything. I keep saying that and I think people think I'm joking, but no, Sean has painted every single mini line under the sun by this point. Um, I'm doing a little bit of sickly skin for the final highlight on the, uh, the chest. So I'm going to be thinning it down and really just kind of dragging it. Now, I remember you saying that you don't have, you can still miss a couple of classes and still join in, right? Yeah, yeah, you can join whatever paint class is good for you. Because, um, like, Sean will, like, talk about what the, what the curriculum is um, before the class begins. So if you're like, uh, I already know how to do all this stuff, or maybe just can't make it, uh, it doesn't matter because you can join in at any time. You won't be locked into like a recurring subscription unless you ask us to. Okay, well, uh, sign up sheet is. Well, then it's on uh, events, uh, the events page on uh, Gigabytes Cafe. Gigabytes Cafe. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll sign that. I'll sign up for that. Sign up. I'll bring, one, I'll, bring, I'll bring one of my unpainted space marines. Yeah, absolutely. Space marines. So, uh, Sean's been kind of talking about it in the class, uh, about the class in the uh, the comments. So, if you guys are interested at all, I'm currently working on the underneath side of his tail. And I'm really enjoying how his uh, chest came out. So, uh, I'll think. Thanks, Drew, for that suggestion. Uh, I'm going to move over to the Dynamite Kid now that I've got those highlights. Well, <laughs> let me see if I need a little bit more of those highlights in here. Dynamite Kid. Dynamite. So I'm doing a little bit more of those, uh, doing a little bit of uh, spot highlights and under shadows and kind of highlighting up the collarbone a little bit just to make sure things kind of pop out. Yeah, thank you. Play at Giga.com. Thank you, John. Alrighty, sir. Those are all my toys. John Caspian, I'm not sure if you saw, but you were 4chan famous yesterday. Okay. Uh, Drew's got more details for you. Um, all right. So we're going to go back to the Dilemite Kid now that we're done with the underbelly on the Stegosaurus. So I need to figure out what kind of tone I want for his highlights and I think it's going to be a mix of Thornwood Green and Menoth White Base. So do a little bit of Menoth White Base, water it up. Uh, yeah, message to Drew, John. One, two. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to get a little bit of Thornwood Green, we're going to brighten it up a little bit. Maybe probably two, or one to one, excuse me. There we go. I like that much better. There we go. Alright. So, we got the shade mostly set on him. And now it's time to kind of come in and pick out highlights. The nice thing is um, I've really thinned down this, this paint, which makes it super easy to blend and highlight. So the transitions should be very, very subtle, very natural. So when you're working on these kinds of models, uh, make sure you, when you're deciding to highlight, always, always, always focus on areas that are going to pull attention first. Uh, so that's going to be things like the face, uh, the face, the shoulders, and the chest. 
Um, they call that uh, the T. So as long as those guys are done to the bestest of your ability, uh, if you for some reason didn't focus on or highlight as much of the other areas, uh, you'll be less likely to have that noticed. So always focus on the T. So yeah, this guy has a lot of fine detail. Like there's striations in his his crest. And there is plenty of soft, subtle details in his muscles that if you take time, especially on this step, the, the highlighting step, you can really make him something exceptional. So you guys, realize that highlighting doesn't always have to be like base shade highlight. You can really take multiple steps on it. And the more steps you take and the more subtle each step is, the more natural and real it's going to look. I'll steal a little bit of the sickly skin, maybe cut in some, some highlights. I uh, actually bought a um, Budbo Steam uh, PC on uh, on Steam, and yeah. so I'm playing it, but I couldn't find a tutorial to help me to explain how the game works. Do they not have a tutorial? I can't find it so far. Hmm, that's interesting. That yeah. that feels like something that they should have. They should definitely yeah. have that. <laughs> You know, you know, they should have a tutorial because I'm, I was playing the game for the first time and I'm like, I'm trying to move them on my figures, it wasn't moving and then it's like, well, what do I do then? What's go I don't know what's going on and then something happened, well, I, yeah, it was so confusing. So I'm trying now trying to figure out how I'm going to... Well, you game. should look up YouTube tutorials on how to uh, move forward. I should, don't I? I mean, if I end the game, it's just hard. So. So yeah, I'm just coming in, using a little bit of this highlight, this Menoth White and this Thornwood, and blocking in some, some highlights. Then I'm using some Sickly Skin to do some edge highlights and really kind of make certain areas pop. And yeah, so making sure I hit the eyebrows, he's got these kind of like super pronounced uh, lips, so I'm going to try to be as delicate as possible and just graze the side of my brush. Over it and just catch, just catch that. Yep. 
Sean, you're a little above frame. Yeah. You're above frame, Aiden. You're always above frame to me. Uh, see, we all need heroes like Ada. Oh, yeah. So when you're doing, like, edge highlighting, be careful of how much paint you load your brush with. Uh, because if you load it a lot, you can actually, like, just drop way too much on the model. And you definitely don't want to do that for something too subtle or something you want to keep subtle. So, yeah. Um, I'll be working on GigaCon stuff probably for the rest of the day here at Gigabytes. Uh, so if anyone wants to come out and see what's going on for GigaCon, I'll be happy to help. Uh, if you guys haven't registered, you need to register because we're getting to that time where we definitely need everyone who is coming or planning on coming out to be on the list so we can make sure that you guys are taken care of with prize support and additional things. Uh, just help speed the tournament along. Because we will be here late on Saturday. Oh my god. No. Now I'll just be flinging models around. Um, so yeah, guys. I appreciate everyone who came by the stream today. And if you have the opportunity to check out Rumble Slam, please do. Uh, it is a great game. And it lets you play with dinosaurs as wrestlers, so that's always awesome. Yeah. And check out the uh, Todd's uh, paint stream. At, yeah, giga, paygiga.com. Yeah, Sean's paint class. Paint class, that's a paint class. Yeah, paint class. Use the long word again. Yeah. All right, guys, until next time. Goodbye. Bye.